Hey everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I'm Zelda Master and in this episode we're going to be taking on the Temple of Fire. This is on the uh, Isles of Ember and Astra told us to take on this temple so we're going to be doing just that. So here we go, don't burn yourself. Alright, I, I got it. Let's go ahead and pick up this heart from this pot and make our way through here. So yeah, this is actually really neat and I love the lighting for the temples as well and everything. So as you can tell, there are these... Uh, lines of flame that we're gonna have to be careful of um, you know just spiraling around as well um but yeah so this is the first temple in the game of course and it's not that tricky honestly so the first thing you want to do is make your way over here and we're gonna find this uh map that kind of leads us to something so if we go ahead and look at this and compare it to our map we'll see that it shows a certain path. Let's go ahead and copy this path and I accidentally clicked A while trying to draw on the map. If we go ahead and do this, I'm not going to be too accurate, but there we go. This should take us over here without falling apparently or something like that. So, alright, let's go ahead and have that path drawn. So, uh, Silly doesn't know what it means, but I do because it clearly, you know, shows the same type of map if you look at it. So anyways, let's go ahead and make our way down here and oh no, we've been blocked. I realize you can actually see like a texture of like a pig uh, blocking the door, which is pretty interesting with, you know, Ganon being like the main villain of Zelda, how they have like pigs as your uh, arch enemy, I guess, even though there aren't really pigs in this game. I mean, maybe there are friendly pigs, but I don't think there's any evil pigs like Ganon. Um, at least the, you know, the beast Ganon, not from Wind Waker, which is, is the sequel to Wind Waker, so, uh, yeah. But whatever. <laughs> Doesn't really make sense, but I just find it cool how you can see, like, a cool, uh, texture of, like, a pig on the door when it shuts on you. But anyways, we got ourselves a small key, and believe it or not, that small key is going to open up this door. So let's go ahead and put in the really small key into this giant keyhole and have it open it and make our way up here. So, as you can tell, yeah, there are these pits that are going to open up if we uh, go near it. So we have to follow the path that we drew and I kind of screwed that up, but there we go. I didn't really do much of a turn when drawing it. But anyways, you got ourselves uh, rupees as well. Let's continue through this path and there we go. There's a bunch of switches. If you go ahead and do the spin attack, you have to do the spin attack because you have to hit them like all at the same time or around the same second. Um, and that will open up the door that will take us upstairs. So let's go ahead and make our way back and I guess head up that door. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and hit this pot as well because I need myself a heart. Um, like I said, some areas are a little difficult with like falling or getting hit uh, early on in the game because you only have three heart pieces, which uh, could get a little difficult, but... Once you start collecting heart pieces, uh, it gets a lot easier. But anyways, here we are on the second floor. And there is this yellow choo, -choo we don't want to hit because um, usually it's going to try to electrify you. So yeah, you can usually wait for it to stop and then you'll be able to hit it. But anyways, by hitting that switch, it will activate the uh, red ones to go down and the blue ones to go up. So it kind of like reverses. This is a common thing in like 2D Zelda games. So yeah, I believe the first time it was uh, in a Zelda game was in A Link to the Past. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and do that, and I believe I'm going to go ahead and kill this guy, just like that. To pick up his heart, I don't really need his heart, but I'm, I just thought I'd pick it up, so a choo-choo heart, yes. And, oh no, what are these green things? If they grab onto you, you have to rub really fast, and yeah, it shows this little icon of Link, like, freaking out, like, oh no, I have this green thing on me, I gotta get it off, and we need to kill him. And we'll have this chest up here. As you can tell, this chest looks uh, similar to the chest that was in the Temple of the Ocean King that gave us the sea chart. So that must mean that these chests are a lot uh, more valuable than the other chests that give us small keys, which are the small brown ones. Let's go ahead and open up this chest, and it's going to give us the boomerang. This boomerang is going to be really helpful. This is the item of the temple. So... With this boomerang, we can draw a line like so, and it will, you know, go with that line. It's not really how a boomerang works, but I think it's super interesting. Anyways, as you can tell, we have an item slot where we can carry multiple items. Obviously, we only have one on us, and we have two potion slots. Um, you don't have to collect bottles, necessarily. You just buy potions, and they're going to be put in your uh, bottle slot like that, which is pretty interesting. But anyways, let's go ahead and use our uh, boomerang. Now, you don't have to click on the boomerang icon every time you want to use it. You can also hit L and R, which if you're right-handed or left-handed, you just click the, uh, like I say, I'm right-handed, I'm just going to click the 
L button every time because that's what I'm holding the DS with because I use the other hand to hold the stylus so I just click it like that and I can easily take it out and go ahead and draw like that and well it's going to hit the switch so yeah it's pretty much the main puzzle for this dungeon it's going to help you out a lot it's pretty much what you want to do to um, pretty much solve all of the puzzles throughout this dungeon now so anyway let's go ahead and quickly draw something like this and start running because those torches are like spinning fire at us and once you hit him we'll have that fire stop the torches will go out and we can advance on throughout this area now we're back on this room which was the room we entered the temple and just on a different side of course and um yeah let's go ahead and uh, as you can tell there is uh, this I'm actually first gonna hit this really quickly <laughs> before I go on to what I was saying, of course. But there are no treasure chests within this room. Basically, how this works is you don't get yourself a dungeon map, you don't get yourself a compass in each temple. You have these gossip stones that are on every single floor of the temple, and they tell you how many chests are in the room you're currently in. And if you, if there are a chest, you know, there are chests within the room, you can easily pay the gossip stone and it will show you where the chest is. So this will help you in 100%ing the game, of course. Obviously, I am 100%ing it. If I didn't mention this before, I don't think I had to, you know, had to mention this. But, yeah, I will be getting all the chests. So, yeah. Um, but anyways, as I was saying, so there's this blue switch. If I hit it, the red um, blocks will go up. So, it, that will pretty much lock, it, lock us in here. So, we're going to go ahead and do this. And yeah, well, what do you know? It hit it, and now these blue ones went down, just like that. So that's pretty much how the puzzle works. Now, if these uh, choo choos are gonna try to electrify you, you can easily use your boomerang. It will stun them, and then there you go, that easy. And now we're locked in this room, which has bubbles. Let's go and try to hit them. Um, obviously, you you need to stun them before you actually want to hit them. So you want to make sure you hit them with your boomerang first, because that usually is going to stun them. And then you can go ahead and hit them like so. And that will help you advance throughout the uh, palace. So yeah, I don't know why I'm saying palace, I mean temple. Because this is a temple, of course, so. Yeah, so yes, okay. <laughs> Anyways, I believe this is going to make a shortcut if we... That, that's really nothing we can do here. Actually, I believe it's over here. Yeah, there we go. This switch will make uh, this part of the area, the fire, to go out. And we can easily exit the temple if we want to, but we don't really need to do that. So let's go ahead and continue on and make our way back to the second floor. Now we're on just a different side. So, yeah. Um, now what I want to do is actually kill these fire key star in this room. I'm going to try to hit it with my boomerang because you don't want to hit it with your sword because it might burn you alive. So, yeah, let's be careful. There we go. We hit it. And um, let's just kill them all. But basically what I want to do in this room is go ahead and pull the switch. And you can tell the switch on the opposite side. So we're going to go ahead and make our way over there. And if we hit that Gossam Stone, it will tell us how many uh, chests are in this room. But I don't really need to know right now. So yeah, let's go ahead and hit this guy as well. Bam! And that will have a chest up here. So by killing those three fire keys, it will give us a... Red Ruby! Woohoo! <laughs> and let's go ahead and pull on this lever that will open up this door. As you can tell, there's a key moving around on the map back and forth. So, uh, I guess you could just guess what we're gonna do um, with that. Yeah, we're gonna try to kill the rat that has the key on it. And to do so, go ahead and just draw a line like this. Pretty much where the uh, rat is running. And if you have it go back and forth, it will eventually hit the rat and give you the small key. So. There we go. <laughs> and now we can continue on. I'm just going to rush really quickly. I don't care if I get hit by any fire. Now we're in this room, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this switch. And then run up here, kill this guy. Use my boomerang once more, hit it like that, and there we go. So yeah. Puzzles are extremely simple. We have the small key, of course, from the right. Let's go ahead and continue. Get up. Um, but this is obviously the first uh, temple within the game, so it shouldn't surprise you that they are really simple. The, the palaces actually tend to pick up really quickly, or the temples, rather. So, um, yeah. I find it really interesting, and honestly, extremely fun. I love the touchscreen, like, puzzles. Uh, but yeah, oh, look, there's, our, there are more candles to uh, light out that we can easily blow out with... Um, with blowing on it, I'm most likely just gonna wait for more lollipops though, so yeah. Just saying, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and head down here and <gasps> hey look a map. Alright, so alright, so we have to hit these switches in this specific order as quickly as possible. So let's go ahead and put the number on our map. So one, two, three, and four. 
And there we go. So let's go back. And obviously Silly is going to give us a small tip, but we don't need it. I'm going to go ahead and hit this because don't want to lose too many hearts. And let's go ahead and light out these candles. So let's blow. All right. And let's go ahead and blow here. So I wish for a lollipop, I guess. All right. And that will allow us to continue through this path. And what we're going to do is, well, we're going to hit him in the order the uh, thing told us. So if we go ahead and hit this one first, go all the way up like this, go over here, go over there. And then I'm going to do this. I don't think I'm actually going to make it. Let's see if I do. Okay, I hit him. A key will appear. Let's see if the boomerang will actually hit the key. Oh, it did. And it gave it to us without us having to grab it afterwards, which is pretty cool. So that's a quick pro tip you can use. If you want to act like a speedrunner or something, I don't really think that's a speedrunner tactic, but I, you know, I thought I'd do it, so I did it! <laughs> I'm just going to hit this. Uh, I believe this uh, gossip stone will tell us how many chests are in this room. So there's one chest left. Uh, I don't need to know where it is, because I most likely know where it is. So yeah, anyways, I don't know why I was going to do that. But anyways, what's that? Oh, it's a weird looking door. Okay. Well, you're going to see this door a lot. Uh, throughout the game, so keep that in mind. Anyways, oh no, enemies! We're gonna have to hit them. Um, can I? Oh, actually, uh, I actually hit that on accident. I didn't even mean to do that. Okay, sweet. I'm gonna hit this guy. Bam! And do this. Oh, I was hoping I'd hit him as well. There we go. And bam, we did it. Wonder if the fire is gonna despawn before it hits us. Will it? Or will it not? But after doing that, it will open up these two doors so we can continue on, of course. And oh, it did. <laughs> awesome. See, I had that all calculated, guys. Wanted to act epic. But anywho, let's go ahead and head up here and kill these bubbles. Bam. All right. Bam. Wait. Wait. Really? Didn't hit him. Link hit. Okay. There we go. And that will open up this path. All right. And I believe it'll open up this one as well. And then, if we go ahead and check this sign, it will tell us when all three torches are lit, the paths will be revealed. So I'm going to go ahead and step on this switch. It will activate one torch to light. So use your boomerang to light the rest of the torches so yeah that's pretty much the puzzle for this which isn't honestly that difficult <laughs> but anyways um if we make our way over here and use our boomerang to hit the switch all the way over there if if it will let me like this there we go we'll have um this part of the floor uh, fill up the gap and now we can continue on and <gasps> the chest is over here this is the chest of the gossip stone uh, that was you know still in the room and it gives us the boss key so as you can tell this boss key is really big and we actually have to carry it all the way to the boss door and the boss door is that weird looking um, door that we just saw that's you know down there so we're gonna head over there with the boss key which um, this is going to play out a lot throughout uh, the upcoming temples, which is really interesting. I mean, obviously, this was really easy. We just ran our way down, but um, in the upcoming temples, we're actually going to have to, like, go through certain areas and avoid enemies with the boss key with us. And generally, carrying items throughout this game is going to be, like, a main thing. So, yeah. It's a pretty interesting puzzle. But anyways, we're on floor uh, number four. And I believe if we read this, it will tell us... Uh, this temple protects the spirit of power. What's on this sign then? Or is this the blue light that returns to the temple's entrance? <gasps> okay, so if we want to head back and we don't feel like we can uh, take on the boss of this temple, we can easily jump through that portal and we'll be fine. But if you try to head up here, uh, Celia will remind you, or will rather warn you, that she senses this presence lingering at the top of the stairs. So be careful. I'm not afraid, so I'm gonna continue. Haha, <laughs> yes. And, well, what do you know, guys? This is going to be the boss for the Temple of Fire. This is Blaz. Yes, Blaz, Master of Fire. Now, before we do anything, look on the map. We can't write on it, but you see something weird about the enemies? Like, you see how Blaz split up into several pieces? Well,. If you look on each icon of, you know, how he split up into several different ghosts, things, um, he's actually, um, they're, they're all different from one another, that's what I'm trying to say, I, I can't really speak. Um, basically what I'm trying to say is that each one has a different amount of horns, so you want to hit them in order, so one, two, three, yes, hit him, 
in the order of the horns, like as them counting upwards. And if you do that, you will connect um, and turn back to his formal self, I guess. And you can hit him as many times as you want. It's like, super simple, honestly. Um, if, if you figure this out early on, it's really simple. So let's go ahead and do this again, just like this. And there we go. We hit him in order, and now we can hit him again. So, yeah. It's honestly really interesting how they did that. So you kind of have to pay attention to the map, and you can also see where he's going to teleport to. If he knocks you back like that, he uh, doesn't really do any damage. And I was doing this wrong, so let's go ahead and do it like this. <gasps> okay, we're good. And continue hitting him. So spin attack, spin attack three times, and then you, sh you know, jab at him with his sword as much as possible. And there we go, we're done. Super easy boss, honestly. Like I said, once you know the uh, way to actually take on the boss by, you know, hitting the three in a specific order with your boomerang, you'll be able to take it on within seconds, and he will disintegrate into dust. So. I am Leaf, Spirit of Power. I serve the Ocean King. I owe you thanks for defeating that evil wizard. You broke the seal, so now I'm free. Look, Link! It's the Spirit of Power, Leaf! This must all be what Astrid was talking about. Please, help us. We need your strength. I was locked away with the Ocean King years ago, but now I can't feel the Ocean King's presence. I wonder what happened to him. If I come with you, maybe I can find out. If you need it, I will be gladly to lend a hand. The Spirit of Power Leaf has joined your group. You should go tell Astrid. And there we go, so the Spirit of Power Leaf joined our group. And let's go ahead and open up this chest that's going to give us the heart container. Uh, basically, after every boss fight, you're going to get yourself a heart container from temples. This is a thing that has been going on throughout pretty much every Zelda game. So, yeah. And now let's go ahead and jump into this blue portal that will take us outside of the temple itself. And, uh, yeah, now we need to tell Astrid of, you know, what happened and how the volcano stopped erupting because we took on the evil monster, Blaz. And, yeah, let's go ahead and tell Astrid. So, I will be doing that in the next episode because how this is going to work throughout the Let's Play is I'm going to be doing a temple, an episode, and usually not cover anything else. So, apologize if this episode was short, but, you know, that's usually how I do it. And, basically, in between episodes, uh, like, in between you know dungeons and palaces will be whatever length but i usually like covering a certain amount when i do temples you know like have them all in one episode or something like that so yeah anyways uh, i've been zelda master thank you all very much for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one so goodbye